Welcome to part 3 of module 3. This is the final tutorial video for Move 102. Here we're going to see how we can actually create our own question. Now, according to David Littman, the best way to create your own questions is to start with something that's already there and then to edit it. So, in general, you want to find the closest question to what you want and then use it as a template to make minor changes. But suppose there's something really missing, or you don't find anything close to what you want. In that case, we're going to start pretty much from scratch. But I'll show you how to use template questions as a starting point. So we're going to go to Select Libraries, and at the very top are the example questions. Let's clear the search box, and let's look in the examples library. And these are examples of the different types of questions. So if you really have nowhere else to start, but you know you want a matching question, or you know you want a drawing question, these are good places to start. You can pick one of these and then use it as a template. So I'm going to end up doing this, but you'll notice that I pretty much wipe out everything that's there and start from scratch anyway. So I'm just kind of guiding you to these template questions, but letting you know that sometimes it's better just to start over. And we'll make some comments about that as we do. The first one we want to do is multiple choice. It's a good one to get our feet wet because it's probably the easiest to code up. So let's take the example of multiple choice here. And let's hit template to get a template of that. All right, now this one has the nice uh, two box entry, which is good. So remember, question text is what the student sees and common control is the programming behind it. Anytime you see the double forward slash, those are just comments. And if you're familiar with programming, you know how nice it is to have comments when you're reading other people's programs. So good programmers will leave comments for others, but you don't have to do that. So what I'm going to do is pretty much wipe all this out because I know what I want to do. I want to go ahead and put in my answer choice is up here. It's a multiple choice question, so the different choices they have are going to be up here. And you just do that by doing dollar sign choices. We index the same way we did with the answers and the answer boxes, and that's the brackets and the number. And the index starts at zero. So choice is zero is actually the first choice. Now, if it's going to be a string of text, we want to put it in quotes. And we're going to be asking about comparing rational and exponential functions. So let's go ahead and name this. Comparing rational and exponential functions. So one of the ways we could compare is they, they both have, well, let's put in what the student sees first so you know what question I'm going to have them answer. Uh, which of the following? best describes a similarity between rational and exponential functions. Now you don't need to put answer box because it will automatically show up since there is only one part to this problem. It knows to put the answers at the end. But if you want to put them somewhere else, then put, you know, say you wanted to put them at the beginning for some reason, then just put dollar answer box wherever you want those answers to appear. Okay. So if you need to move them to a special place, put dollar sign answer box wherever you want the answer choices. Otherwise, leave it blank and they'll appear at the end. So there's the question. Um, first possible answer choices, they both have asymptotic end behavior. And we're going to do the second choice, which is choices one. They both have restricted domains.
And the third choice they both are defined in terms of polynomials. And the last choice, number four, choice is three, which is choice four, they have nothing in common. <laughs> Right, so these will be the four choices. Now you need to pick which one of those is going to be the answer. So we're going to say that the answer was the first one, which is actually zero, right? You got to specify the index of the correct answer. Now you can always make the first one the correct answer because the default is that it's going to shuffle the order of these answer choices. If you don't want to do that, then there's a setting to make it so that you don't shuffle the order. But the default is they're going to be randomized. So I usually make the first choice my correct answer, and then I come up with some incorrect answers to go with it. Let's take a preview of this problem. There's the question text followed by the answer choices. And notice that they are randomized. And then the answer will be the one that they uh, both have asymptotic end behavior. I'll try submitting that make sure that it works. All right, once we have the question the way we want, we can save it and add it to the assessment using defaults. Right. When we do that two more times, let's next look at creating a number question. So we're going to do the <clears throat> example of a number type. And this one has the four box entry. Remember I said earlier that I wasn't a big fan of that. So we're gonna clear out the answer and the question control boxes and go back to the two box entry. Well, sometimes it won't let you go back to a two box entry. So we'll just leave those blank and avoid them. All right, so this problem I want to tell the students that the average of five numbers is some number, and four of the numbers are this, and I want them to guess the fifth number. So here's how that would look. We'll say the average of five numbers is blank. Four of the numbers are blank, 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 and blank, what is the fifth number? Okay, now what are these numbers going to be? We want those numbers to be randomly selected. And so we need to do that in common control. And for variables, you just use the dollar sign and letters. So we're going to use A, B, C, D, and E. And what we're going to do is pick all five numbers. I mean, a great way to do this is to go through the calculations by picking the answer first and then having the student try to guess what that randomly number is randomly picked number was. So, so we're going to pick all five numbers, then calculate the average, then give them the average and four of the numbers and have them pick the fifth. So here we're, we're picking randomly five numbers. We want them to be non-zero. We want them to be different. And we want them to be random. And we want the numbers to be between negative 100 and 100. And we want there to be five numbers. So that'll pick the five numbers. And we're going to now pick, calculate the average. So dollar sign average is a variable that will be defined as the average. And we know how to calculate the average. We just add these numbers up. And divide by five. 
and then we need to specify what the answer is. The answer will be the first number. So A is going to be the answer. All right, now we're going to use these variables that we declared in the sentence here. The average of five numbers is dollar sign average. So that number will appear there. And then the four of the numbers are dollar sign B, dollar sign C, dollar sign D, and dollar sign E. All right, that should do it. So these randomly picked numbers and the calculated average will appear. And here's what the student sees. The average of five numbers is 2.8. Four of the numbers are negative 58, negative 77, so on. And you can double check that it calculates right. And then you have a good number type problem. All right, so we'll go ahead and save that and add that to the assignment. And we've got one last problem to do. And that's to create one where they have to put in an expression or an equation. I find a lot of the problems on here just have you put in a number. And especially with these things like uh, word problems and solving systems of equations, I really want them to set up the equation. So how do you make sure that they set up an equation that has algebra in it? Well, these are called function questions. And there's an example of a function type right at the top. There. So we'll template that one. And this one has the two box entry just like we want. And what we're going to do is do a variation on the problem we just did. So we're going to say the average of five numbers is dollar sign average. Four of the numbers are B, C, D, and E. What is the, there we go, set up a linear equation that relates the five numbers to the average use x for the fifth number in your equation. Let's take a look at that. All right, looks good. So we don't have numbers here because we haven't set up those random number generators, but let's go ahead and do that. So we'll pick the numbers the same way. So we pick the five random numbers. Let's calculate the average. And we then need to say what variables are going to be used in the problem. Now the default is that the variables, the variable is going to be x. So here I'm really just including it to show you how it would work if you wanted to change it. If you wanted the variable to be t or some other letter, you'd put a statement in right here where you specify what the variable is in quotation marks. If you have more than one variable, separate them by a comma. The default function is actually just an expression. 
So if you want the answer to be an equation, then you need to specify with answer format equals equation. Now we actually give the answer as an equation in quotation marks. So there's the average equation that you would expect, where the average is equal to the sum of the numbers divided by 5. And let's take a look at this. So there's a good version. But with the way this works, the student can often find a way around this. And maybe they're able to guess that final number. So what, what happens when I just put in that solution? So the solution is actually 73. And if I put x equals 73, it marks it right. That's not really what I wanted the student to do. I wanted them to write up the equation, but not solve it, simplify it. In some ways, it could be harder to write the rational equation than to actually put in the answer. So the problem is these are equivalent equations, and so mom can't tell that they're different. We don't want to have to have a certain place that x has to be or the numbers have to be in a certain order. So we do want to allow all equivalent equations to a certain extent. What we want to do is say that they need to make sure that it has that fraction in there. So if you want to require certain things in the answer, then hit dollar sign require times and then specify that you want the forward slash or the fraction bar to appear once. So this will require that that fraction bar appears exactly once in their equation. And let's now try it again. And if we just put in the answer this time, it doesn't accept it. All right? We need to actually put it in with a fraction. Now, they could do some simplifying, right? They could combine those numbers 96, 31, negative 91, and negative 71. If you want to allow that, that's the way it's going to do it now. If you wanted to require all the addition and subtraction signs, you'd have to be a little more careful with how you program this. So if we add those up, we get negative 35. And I can just do this. And that's an equivalent answer that I would want to accept. So we'll submit that, and that counts. Because it's got the forward slash in there. You could also require the parentheses. But I think that's the only way they're going to get that correct with the fraction in there. Okay, so we've got the question how we want it. I think we're ready to save this and add it to the assessment. And I think that wraps it up. Remember, when we finish picking the questions out, we hit done. And you can always go down to the assignment and click on it to see it from the student's point of view. So here's the problems, and they go through and submit them one at a time. And 
we'd be very happy if you would go down to the bottom and complete the Move 102 Participant Survey. Even though it's an online course, we value your feedback and would appreciate it. And thanks for joining me in Move 102.